what is she hiding, this woman? Mm. What does she not want you to see? Let's, let's see whether there's a further progression. So you have this woman with a golden cup. It's the Roman Catholic Church. Mm. There can be no doubt. She depicts herself in that way. In verse 6 it says, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Mm. Millions upon millions, hundreds of millions have been slaughtered. The Valdenses, the Albigenses, the Protestants. You can start before the Reformation, 100 years before the Russian Reformation with the Hussites. You, you name it. Blood flowed. Children were ripped from the wombs. There is no doubt that this persecuting power continued what Rome started in the Colosseums yeah. and did it in another way. And she used the most terrible tortures in her torture chambers. And she is literally a church drunk with the blood of the martyrs. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration, how can this be? Mm. How can it happen? Because the, the way she portrays herself looks so good. Looks so good. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? Mm. I will tell thee the mystery of the woman. So there's a mystery. Yeah. And of the beast that carries her, which has seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was. Mm -hmm. Pointing back in time. So it's pointing back to Revelation chapter 13. Yeah. And if you want to go beyond that, it's pointing back to Revelation chapter 12. So this beast was. And is not. Mm -hmm. So at this stage, when this prophecy takes place, while the angels are getting ready to pour out their vials mm -hmm. already, historically speaking, she is in a is not stage. And shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundations of the world. And when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Mm -hmm. This is like a, a riddle, isn't it? It is. <laughs> it's a beautiful riddle. So let's unpack it. This beast once was a political okay. power. Now the interesting thing is this beast has no crowns. No. Revelation 17, no crowns. Revelation 12, the crowns were on the head. Yeah. Revelation 13, the crowns were on the horns. horns. Now there are no crowns because she is it's not, not ruling. Mm. Mm. Oh, let's put that differently, <laughs> Martin. She's appearing not to rule. Exactly. That but, is part of the mystery. But obviously she's ruling because she's riding the beast. The beast, exactly. Now who controls the reins when you ride the beast? The one sitting on top. The one who's sitting on top, right? Here she is ruling. Now, how many, how many heads does this beast have? Seven. Seven. Does the woman have a head? Yes. So it's eight. <laughs> so if you add her head, what is her number again? Eight. What was the number of the little horn? Eight. Yes, obviously, uh -huh. right? Because there were ten, three were uprooted, that leaves seven. And then she takes prominence, so she's the eighth. Mm -hmm. Here, this woman is also the eighth head. Is it the same as the little horn? Same power. Okay. This is, this is such an interesting puzzle. And, you know, mankind has been trying to unravel this for many, many times. And there are many, many exegeses on who the heads are. Some start with Egypt and some start with Assyria. And... Uh, you know, who are you leaving out and who are you putting in? It's very complicated. So let's stick to what the scripture said. Yeah, make it plain. All right, so let's look at this, this beast and what its attributes are. He said, why did you marvel? I will tell you this mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was pointing back to when it had power, and is not, 
This is the time frame that we're That's talking it. about. So what time frame are we talking about? This beast at the moment is not wielding power or doesn't seem to be wielding power. Exactly. So it's after it had it received the oh. so-called deadly wound. So it must be after 1798, mm. right? So we're living in a time of history from 1798 to where we are now. Yeah. So we are in the is not stage. And it shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. So we want to know what philosophy mm -hmm. came out of the bottomless pit because that's where it comes from. Yeah. And where is it going to go? Well, it's going to go to perdition. So this beast is um, going to be destroyed. Yeah. And uh, who follows it? They that dwell on the earth shall wonder. Where did we pick up that word before? The wonder after the beast. In Revelation chapter 13. Mm -hmm. And the word wonder with a O yeah. means that you receive its mindset. You think about it and mm. you think that this beast is right. It's actually deceiving you. Yeah. Because those that wander after it, in other words, accept its wine, are not written in the book of life. And that puts it very clear who these people are. Big trouble. So you better look at her very carefully. And they beheld the beast that was and is not. This is the stage we're in now. And yet it is. It is. So, so how can it not be if it is? <laughs> It it's must have gone underground, right? Mm -hmm. So let's look at that. This is fascinating. And here is the mind which has wisdom. Uh, Daniel says none of the wicked will understand. And but the, the wise will understand. And the wise will have their names in the book, not like the other ones. Now, what makes you wise? Your intelligence? No. Definitely not. No. Your wisdom comes from believing the Word of God. It, it, that's where, um, I remember when you mentioned that, uh, that's where holiness comes from, in agreement. And if you believe the Word of God and you don't do it, you're a hypocrite. Yeah. Okay. So here's the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains. Now, this is a clear description. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, you so don't have to wonder. When the Bible in Daniel says there are ten horns, and these ten horns are ten kings that shall arise, or ten kingdoms, gives both definitions, and that's what they are. Yeah. So here are seven mountains. So it gives you the literal description. All right, so there are seven mountains. There are literal mountains. Is Rome built on seven mountains? Yes. Or seven hills? Mm -hmm. Yes. But a mountain in scripture also stands for a kingdom. Yes. So she is built on seven inclusive kingdoms. So if, you, if we take it into the historic continuous interpretation, this will be following on each other in sequence. And then it tells you where we are in the stream of time. And there are seven kings. Remember that a kingdom also has a king. Mm -hmm. Five are fallen, one is, the other is not yet come, and when he comes, he must continue for a short space. All right, five are fallen. We'll have to see who the five are that are fallen. Mm -hmm. The one is, which one is? The is not stage, because that's what he described as it is, in the is not stage. And the other is not yet come, so there's one to come. And when he comes, he must continue a short space. Fortunately, only a short space. We don't have to yeah. sit with him for very long. And then it has this interesting verse, and the beast that was mm -hmm. and is not, it's in the is not stage, even he is the eighth. Yeah. And he is of the seven and goes into perdition. Now he's the eighth. Uh, once the three horns were uprooted, what was the little horn then? The eighth. And if, you, if this woman with her head sits on a seven-headed beast and she has a head, then what is her number? Eight. Okay, so eight becomes interesting, right? Yes. So, if we use only the beasts as portrayed in Daniel and Revelation, 
In other words, we cut out all mm. the other possibilities with the many exegesis that there are out there in the world. We don't count Egypt, we don't count uh, Syria, we don't count any of them. Mm. We only use what Daniel and Revelation has given China, us. China, Russia, leave them out. Leave them all out. Just look at what Daniel and Revelation has said. Then the five that have fallen at this stage are Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. Yeah. Pagan Rome, right? And Papal Rome. That's it. Because she's a, the is not stage. Exactly. She has received a mortal room. Yes, after 17. So those are five that have fallen. Mm. One is. Yeah. That must be in the wounded papacy because there are no crowns on any of their heads or horns that seem to have a mortal mm -hmm. wound and was ruling because it's riding the beast. It must be ruling via a proxy. Yeah, so it's still ruling, but you don't know. You don't it's know a, who it's ruling. Mm. It's closing its eyes. You're not supposed to see this, right? Because yeah. she's supposed to be out of sight. Yes. Out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> and if the Antichrist has been identified, what if the Antichrist doesn't exist anymore and has no power, then he's not a problem. Exactly. Then there must be another Antichrist. Maybe he's, we were wrong. Yeah, and then he still has to come or whatever. Oh, yeah, he still has to go. Maybe he was already there. Then we don't have to worry about yeah. him. But he's going to be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. How could he have been already there? No. Or maybe he's coming in the future then. And if it's only the future one, what about he is? Big problem. All right, so if she's riding, then the beast exists. And the beast is a political power, right? One is. That must be the wounded papacy that seemed to have a mortal wound and was ruling via a proxy. The mortal wound was administered in 1798 by France. France also introduced an atheistic, godless form of secular government during the French Revolution and it attacked the two witnesses of God, the Old and the New Testament. Now we read all of that in Revelation chapter 11. We don't want to do a full exegesis of Revelation chapter 11 now. We don't have time. We're concentrating on this woman. Yes. But let's just go to the verse, Revelation 11, 7. And when they, that's the two witnesses, the Old and the New Testament, finish their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So firstly, this beast, this power, which is not described as anything, as a seven-headed beast or anything, it's just mm. called a beast. It's a political entity. Yeah. And it comes out of the bottomless pit. Mm -hmm. This woman of Revelation 17, wasn't she also associated with the bottomless pit? Exactly. So what's the philosophy in the is not stage? The philosophy? In a wounded stage. It must be secularism. It must be what came out of the French Revolution, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So who actually rules after 1798? Well, Revelation 13 tells us there's a beast out of the earth. Yeah. And this beast has two phases. Just like I, Rome had a pagan phase mm -hmm. and a papal phase. So the beast has two phases. It has a lamb-like phase and a phase that speaks like a dragon. That's it. There is no conquering here. It's a shift. Yeah. It's the same as there's no ruling by yes. the other one, it's just a shift in shape. Correct. And there are no crowns. Mm -mm. Because it's an is-not stage. Yeah. But it's still ruling. It's still ruling. This woman it, is riding this beast, yeah. like it or not, even in the is-not stage. Yeah. And I beheld another beast come up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now we know what the dragon speaks like. He persecutes. Yeah. He makes laws. Against God's. Against God's people. Yeah. And he kills them. So this lamb-like beast is going to speak like the dragon. It's going to speak like Rome spoke. Yeah. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. Who's his proxy? The United States of America. This beast. That's it. Because he's doing exactly what this one that is not, supposedly, 
wants him to do in any case. But Martin, it's a lamb-like beast. It's a Protestant country. Are you telling me that this woman is using this power as a proxy to rule in her behalf so that people won't see mm -hmm. her? But in actual fact, she's still ruling? That's exactly what the Bible is telling us. Okay. And what does this beast do when it speaks like the dragon? It causes the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast. In other words, to honor and obey it. That's it. How do you do that? By forcing. How do you force them? The legislation. Okay. Whose deadly wound was healed. Hmm. So there's a progression. Until this deadly wound is healed, yeah. this beast is acting as a proxy for the other one. That's it. All right. And you will start seeing it speaking like a dragon the closer we get to the heel. So it must completely. transition from a lamb-like hmm. principle to a dragon principle. But Martin, if it was a proxy, then the dragon principle must have been hidden in it all along. Yeah, definitely from the beginning. Okay. How? How do you deal and rule without being seen? Smoke screens. Smoke screen. Okay. 